Good morning. So today we're going to do a little bit different video today. We are going to walk through my plots out here. We've got our golden harvest corn over here behind my seed warehouse. We've got the golden harvest soybeans over here to the side. And uh, we're going to take a look through them. We're going to pull some ears of corn. I'm going to talk about each of the individual hybrids or at least the ones that I feel like are important in my geography here. So um, I kind of do this every year and um, it's a fun one to make. It usually gets really long and it's probably pretty boring for you. But for me and for uh, anybody interested in the corn and stuff that I sell, uh, this is a really good informative video. So um, we'll go ahead and get started here. First up, I started 99 day in my plot. Now I don't sell a ton of 99 day corn, but I do some here and there. And uh, this is a pretty good one the 99 E68. Uh, we'll go through the numbering system here real quick, but um, the first two are gonna be your maturity. So like this is a 99, the next one there you'll see is a 00, uh, that would be a 100 day. And so on from there, you'll see an 02, it would be 102. The E68 is just the variety designator, doesn't really mean anything. And then a big change for us this year is uh, this little letter right here. Used to be we would have some numbers in there that would say something like, I'm gonna try and find the stake so I could show you what it said when we did the plot. Oh yeah, right there. This 5122. So this when we planted it was 99 E68 5122. Now, 5122 meant that it was an Agrisure Duracade, and that there were two um, corn bore traits and two rootworm traits. So it's got Agrisure RW, Agrisure corn bore. Herculex 1 is our corn bore trait. That's the second one in there. And then the Duracade would be the second rootworm trait. Those are what control the uh, insects, uh, corn bore, rootworm, obviously, right? So they have simplified it this year going forward. Uh, we're no longer putting that 5122 or we had a 3122 or a 5222 or several different things that it may be. Now it just D, D for Duracade. There's some other ones down there. I will explain them as we get to them, but that just makes it a lot easier uh, to understand what exactly it is. So let's go out in the corn and take a little look around here. It rained last night. Uh, we had about a half inch, so it's a little bit muddy out here. Um, and the leaves on the corn are wet. I've tried to wait as long as I can, but I'm busy this afternoon and I, I can't really wait anymore. But yeah, it's it's wet and not real fun to walk out here. So let me look around. We'll see if we got any disease pressure. We have sprayed fungicide out here twice, both at V5 and at tassel. So I don't expect to see much, but let me look around, pull it here, and then I'll show you what I find. Okay, as far as leaf diseases and stuff go, this corn looks really, really healthy. There was there was one leaf over here, I found a tiny speck of tar spot, but it's very, very minimal, this one right here. There's just a little bit right there, you probably can't even see it on the film. Um, so nothing to worry about there. The upper canopy looks super healthy. I don't see any gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, anything like that. So I pulled some ears, or stripped the husks back on them. First thing I noticed is this husk is pretty loose on the end of these, right? So it's gonna open up, the ear's actually kind of growing right out of it, which good and bad. So that allows it to breathe a little bit, get some of that excess moisture out so that it, we can avoid some of the ear rots and molds. But I do see we've got some insect feeding. In fact, this one's worse. Right there's the worm, right there. We got a Western bean cutworm. Can you guys see him? He is going to town on our corn and uh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. There's a little bit of feeding on this ear, there was just one kernel here, and I didn't see any on this one. So it's not not like it's every ear, but it's he's he's right there. We found him. Um, but you look at these ears that I pulled back. We've got nice, big, deep kernels. We are past dent stage here. They're nice long ears. They are tipped back a little bit. That's that. That's the ear kind of growing out of the end of these a little bit. So. Um, I don't, the tip back doesn't bother me. I know some people really hate seeing that because they think it's lost yield potential. And well, we did lose a little bit on this one, but I, that doesn't bother me because look at the rest of the ear. Like for a 99 day corn, this one's really good. Okay, we're spending a little more time on this one than we're going to with other ones, but I, I broke an ear in half and it's really hard to see, but we do actually have a milk line on this one. It's still right out here at the tip, right there. Um, but the end of these kernels, 
are starchy and not milky. Whereas if I uh, sink my fingernail into the base of it here, it should, yeah, all the juice comes out, but not at the tip where it's turned into more of a hard starch. So this corn is reaching maturity. It's, it's two, three weeks away yet from being black layered and physiologically mature, but we are getting there. We will compare that to the 113 days down on the other end of the plot and you can see what the difference is in maturity. So anyway, 99 68 really good corn early. Uh, I like that one a lot. This one here, 00A97. Uh, I don't know anything about it, to be honest. Uh, somewhere I've got a product guide, or I did. I'll have to go find it. Uh, but this one is brand new for 23. Uh, this is the only look I've ever seen of it is here in the plot. And um, we got a little thin on these ends. I kind of ran out of seed on this first pass or second pass or something. So I got just a little bit thin. You can see we've had some birds maybe getting in here. That looks like bird damage to me. Once we get out in there, we won't see that though. So um, let's go take a look. All right, so a couple of things I've noticed in compared to the one we were just in. This one is a very broad leaf, very, very wide compared to that other one. Um, just a plant characteristics thing doesn't really mean a whole lot other than there's a lot of leaf surface there to soak up the sun and do photosynthesis. That's good. Still looks really healthy. Our fungicides are working. Um, maybe a touch more disease in this one, but nothing that I am, I am worried about or going to complain about. So we're not going to talk too much about that. You can see we've got that same thing. We've got these ears growing right out the end of them. Um, but again, a fairly loose husk. Uh, nothing that's going to be causing too much mold and damage in there. Uh, that one's filled right out to the tip. This looks like a totally different ear. Let me strip some back. Okay, well I stand just a touch corrected because, well, look, we've actually got some mold starting already on this one and those are actually sprouts. So the kernels on the ear are beginning to grow. That's not good. We don't like seeing that, especially in August here already. That's a problem. Um, this is not dented as much as that last one, but it's a big blocky ear. I bet we got 20 rows around on at least a couple of these ears that I just pulled back. Um, looks really good. Filled out a little bit better than the 99 day was. Something interesting that I see on here, and I've seen hybrids do this before, but do you guys see the red streak in these kernels? Um, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that is typical of iodent background in the inbreds, the parent stock seed. Um, Pioneer uses a lot of iodent um, genetics, and uh, I've seen it in some of uh, Golden Harvest stuff as well. We used to have 110 day that had that red streak in the kernels almost every single ear had it and I see it in this one. So that's that's interesting. And it was the same similar ear type. I would I would almost be willing to bet there's a shared parent between those two, but this is 100 day versus 110, so maybe not. I don't know. This ear here that's got that sprouting and stuff on it, it clearly had some bug feeding, so I'm, we're going to attribute that to uh, insect damage. That's why agrosherviptera is important. I didn't see what the trait designator on this hybrid was, so we'll go out and look. But promising. Uh, we'll know more when the combine rolls, but that's a really nice looking ear. Uh, we've got some dang good corn out here, and at 100 day stuff, like this is, this is out of my wheelhouse. It's not what I plant a lot of, so um it's it's interesting and it's encouraging to see that it looks that good and look at out here i know i know there's a big gap here right but look at that here like those are massive she's got some flex that's wow double oa 97 aa so the aa stands for agrisher above that means this one is um only corn bore resistant Two modes of action for corn borer control, refuge in a bag, blended, but it uh, does not have a rootworm trait, does not have agrisure viptera, which viptera would control uh, western bean cutworm, corn earworm, that stuff that's damaging these ears that we can see. So I went and grabbed a product guide just so I could see what the company has to say about this 00897. And um, not that I'm calling them out, but here's why ground truthing and seeing stuff in the field is so important instead of trusting what they say. Read that last bullet point. Consistent ear size and strong standability support higher populations making for a 1-2 yield punch. Now, I am not saying that this one is not good at high populations. It very, very well could be. And it probably does have strong standability. That's excellent. I love seeing that. But you cannot tell me that this has consistent ear size and doesn't flex. And, and maybe they're not saying that. I should look at the other spot where it talks about flex versus determinate sized ears because there's a ton of ear flex in this one. Now, it may not drop off in size where you get super high population and it maintains a good consistent size ear. And that's what they mean. But where you don't have these next to stuff, they're flexing big time. So, yeah. 
This one looks promising, actually. If I planted 100-day corn, I would plant that one uh, on a fair amount of their acres for, for what I'm doing. Outstanding emergence, early season vigor, uh, excellent roots and stalks. Oh, Agrisure Artesian. Yeah, we should talk about that as well. It doesn't say it on the sign there, so I didn't recognize that. But uh, Agrisure Artesian is Golden Harvest um, drought tolerance uh, trait. And so this one here... Uh, performs excellent in dry conditions and while we're not terribly dry have not been terribly dry we did get dry briefly and it um it helps it power through those kind of environments so that one i'm putting a star next to that one to keep an eye on it okay next up we have o2k39 uh this one here is a aa agrisure above it also, I believe, comes in a Duracade version with a rootworm control. And you can see we've got where we ran out of seeds, so we've got a little bit of stuff off here. But um, uh, O2K39, this is the first one that I actually plant some of. I planted a box of this, and uh, it has just turned into a really, really good go-anywhere early hybrid. It's um, I was a little skeptical of this one at first. It does have an issue we'll talk about in a minute, but um, uh, I think that this one has really good top-end yield potential. You can see it's got some ear flex. I mean, I get that there's a row missing here, but look at the size of these ears. Just incredible size on them. So um, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this O2K39. And uh, let's take a look at the leaves and, and walk out here where it's thicker and good corn and we can take a look at the ears. All right, O2K39. So, um, man, them are impressive ears. Big honking fat ears. Lots of rows around on them. Um, we do have some bug feeding here. The Agrisurvipterra trait would help. Uh, we don't have it in this hybrid, I don't believe, at least not in the one that's planted here. So um, we've got some ear feeding. A little bit of tip back, not too bad, but um, man, them are just... Nice ears. Let me break that one in half for you. Big, thick, deep kernels. So this hybrid was actually in the top three in the plot last year as a 102 day. Um, judging by what I'm seeing here, and we'll see what's yet to come, but it looks like it might do it again. Looks really good. Impressive. Impressive, impressive. Now, this hybrid, as good as it is, and I can plant it everywhere kind of thing, it does have one major thing that we need to talk about. This hybrid is not the best when it comes to grain quality. Uh, it has test weight issues. Now, when I say it has test weight issues, I do not mean that it is 50 pound corn and you're gonna get docked every single time at the elevator. It is not that. Um, on a normal year where most of your stuff is 54 to 56 pound test weight, this one's gonna be 54. And there is nothing wrong with that. You do not get docked for 54 pound test weight corn. Yield will always trump test weight every single time. Do I want to raise 56 to 60 pound test weight corn? Absolutely, I do. But you know what I want to do more than 60 pound test weight corn? I want to raise 230 bushel corn instead of 200 bushel corn. If it's 230 bushel at 54 pound test weight, I will take that over 200 bushel at 60 pound test weight every single time. So this one will do that. Don't worry about the test weight. If we get into a really poor year, we have an early frost, yeah, you might get some 52s out of it. But in my mind, it's worth the risk. Um, I have I have shied away from early hybrids over the last few years because my early stuff has been burning me and I just haven't gotten as good a results as the full season. I planted some of this one, so that should tell you something that I have a little bit of confidence in it. All right, moving on here to the uh, 06 A27D Duracade. Um, this one... This one is uh, a new hybrid, again, like the 00A97 was, and I don't know a ton about it, but what I've been told is don't expect top-end yield potential. It's a good hybrid, but it's that, um, it's that 180 to 200 bushel corn type ground. It is not something that's going to run 250 to 300 in that situation very often or ever. Uh, we have better options for the high-yield environment. Um, you could probably classify it as a workout horse, solid agronomics on it. Um, good corn, I just don't think that it's got the top end yield potential to keep up with some of the other stuff. We are showing some nitrogen deficiency. I don't know if that's just here on the end where the nitrogen, the anhydrous bar didn't get turned on quite fast enough or if it goes most of the way across the plot. Uh, I don't know. We will know more when the combine rolls in this one, but I'm not expecting huge things out of it. That said, it does have a fit. It's just... It's just you got to manage it. You got to put this one where it should go, and I can't sell it to a guy and say go plant it anywhere you want because it's probably not going to keep up with some other products. 
We did have a big gap there, 102 to 106 day. I've got a couple of 103s and 104 in the middle there that are good hybrids. They're just older, and so we don't put them in the plot and test them every year anymore. And I was trying to keep the numbers down so we didn't get too many varieties out here because this gets way too long. So, 07 G73. If you watch my videos frequently, you'll know that I have talked about this one in a little uh, a little bit in the past. Um, it was brand new in this this year for 22. I had a little bit of it in the field last year. I think they gave me two bags of it to plant. And uh, this one has a unique but specific issue that is scaring me away from it, more or less. Now, that said, it yielded really well last year. And if it does the same again this year, we're going to deal with this, this little problem that it's got and not worry about it too much. But uh, there's a big caution here. So let's go out and I'll show you exactly what it is. All right. So we're out in this 07 G73. The plant health looks excellent on it. Um, you know, again, our fungicides worked out here. It's a nice plant type. It's nothing super showy or tall or spectacular, but there's nothing wrong with it either. And it, it looks pretty good. Here's the problem that I have. I gotta, I gotta open an ear up. Every single ear that I open up in this hybrid has this problem right here. See those silks that are all bunched up there? They're not straight growing out the end. A lot of them are, but then you get a bunch that are all twisted up. We call that silk balling, and it costs us the tip. Now, it didn't cost us very much on this ear. That's still a pretty nice ear. Not as impressive as some of the other ones we have seen, um, but it's in every ear. And if, if for some reason we had a really dry pollination period, I'm afraid that that issue uh, would cost this hybrid dearly. Opened up another one, we see the exact same thing. I mean, it's just it's just a characteristic to this hybrid. I remember last year having a little bit of it out and I uh, got a call from uh, a, my agronomist saying, hey, go check that hybrid out. We're hearing issues of this out in Wisconsin. Sure enough, I had it, um, had it in the plot. It was still pretty good. I don't know where exactly it placed in the plot last year, but um, and then we're seeing the same exact thing again this year. Uh, it's in the plot here. It's in the fields. I looked at it up at Agro Expo the other day when we were up there. They had it in their plots. It was doing the same thing. So um, as much as I need a new 107 day, and I was really hoping this one was going to be it, I, I don't think that it is. All right, we're moving up. Now we're getting into my wheelhouse, stuff that I know really, really well. 08R52, right? So this is 108 day corn. And um, I, this one was, was brand new in 2020. They gave me a few bags of it in 2019 to plant. And uh, those of you who have heard me talk about it before, I wasn't making these videos in 2019 or not in the spring anyway, but we had the wettest spring we have ever had in 2019. We did not plant a single bag of corn until June 4th. June 4th, I planted this one. Planted this one and I planted another 108 day that's an old one that we no longer have anymore. Uh, side by side. They both yielded really well for being planted June 4th. This one was just really wet. Now, planting 108 day corn in June in Ohio, Michigan, right on that border, uh, yeah, it's going to be wet. I should have expected that, but it kind of turned me off from this hybrid and I kind of favored the other one because I'm like, well, if it's they're yielded about the same and that one was drier. Now, it turns out that other 108 day got tar spot really bad, doesn't have the plant health that this one does. This one here has turned into one of our best, most consistent uh, go-anywhere hybrids that we have. I really, really like this one now that I've gotten used to it. So yeah, it doesn't have the best dry down in the world, but 108 days not outrageously long for us. We can manage that here and uh, it'll be just fine. Now it's not the prettiest corn. It's kind of got this pale green, yellow color to it. Um, that's not nitrogen deficiency. That's just genetic. That's just the way that this one is. Um, so I don't worry about it. It doesn't have the biggest, broadest leaves that I've ever seen, but they're not bad. This hybrid is very consistent. I can put this on clays. I can put it on sands. I can put it anywhere. I can sell it to a customer and say, go plant it. And it will be one of his best hybrids on the farm. I can just about guarantee it every year. Now we're showing some tip back here. We definitely have some tip back on there and, and some of this one here, some aborted kernels. So we lost a little bit of potential, but big, huge kernels. That's where this one makes its yield is it puts on big honking kernels that weigh a lot. And um, your kernels per bushel count is gonna be less, lower 
than some other hybrids that have lots of rows around but smaller kernels and so this one will yield um it may not win every year it's probably not going to win the plot but it, it is going to be towards the top or in the top half and it's one that is just it's consistent you plant it you, you use this one uh knowing that it might be a little wetter at harvest but not wetter than our 110 and 11 and 12 day stuff and it has a fit there so uh i like it i like it a lot Another quick point on this one, you'll see that this is 08R52V, V4 Viptera. So this has two corn borer modes of action and it has AgriSure Viptera in it. So it will not get the corn earworm, the Western bean cutworm that we saw in the earlier stuff down there. And uh, uh, that's a really good thing for preventing ear molds and losing kernels because the, the, the insects are eating them. Um, does not have a uh, rootworm option that's a that's a bit of an issue with this one in certain areas but we're in the east we have rootworm but we don't have rootworm like the guys in iowa and illinois do and so um while i prefer to plant fully traded rootworm hybrids it is not a prerequisite i will still plant stuff that doesn't have it because i don't have to have it all right, 09T26, so we're into another new hybrid here. We talked about the 100 day, the 0097, we talked about the 106, and now we've got this 09T26 as a new hybrid, and I don't know a ton about it, but here's what I have I have learned. One, I can just, just looking at it from right here, I can see it's a very upright leaf. Somebody planting narrow rows, this is a great option. Um, just because you get that upright leaf and it doesn't close the center as well, but you can capture a lot of sunlight doing that. Um, putting it in 20 inch rows would be a good fit. Uh, solid, solid agronomics on this. This one is going to have great roots and stalks. It's not going to go down and uh, we're not going to have any issues with lodging that kind of stuff. What I hear, what I hear is that it has an ugly ear and it's going to have tip back every single time, no matter what. Let's find out if that's true here. All right. I pulled this ear back first and I kind of went, holy cow, there ain't a dang person that grows corn in this country that wouldn't take that ear right there or what you can see. Did it tip back? Yeah, it tipped back. So did that one, so did that one. That one even a little bit more. But the ear underneath it is just crazy impressive. We got some of that red streak again. Makes me wonder if we got some of that similar genetic background. But you want to talk about rows around? Let's break that one in half, buddy. Wow, that is that is an impressive ear. And I did not cherry pick that from the end where there's no competition. That was in the middle of a solid row of corn where there was full stalks on both sides. Let's see what we can do. There's some rows on there. Count them up. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. That's a 22 around. And while the kernels aren't terribly wide, they're very deep. I am impressed. Have I said that in this plot yet? Holy cow, I'm impressed. That looks really good, really good. All right, we're starting to move into the, the meat of my lineup, right? The, the heavy hitters. And we're actually gonna talk about these next two together because we have 210 day hybrids here that are both excellent and both have their fit but they could not be more different, right? So we've got 10D21 over here. 10D21 is one of the hybrids that I have planted up in the irrigation field. It is a rock solid agronomic hybrid. It has outstanding stalk strength, root strength, standability. This one is not gonna fall down. It's very, very good from a plant health. You don't have to spray it with a fungicide. I still did, I still would, because if you're planting this one, you're doing it to push the crap out of the yield because top end yield is what 10D21 offers. 10L16 over here on the other hand, it's got crappy stalks, it's got bad roots, it's not great, um, but it flat out yields and it needs a fungicide. You can't, this is probably now one of the poorest hybrids I have against tar spot. And I hate saying that because I don't want it to scare people away from planting it. I would, I do plant more of this 10L16 than anything else because it fits my acres so much better than the 10D21 does. 
Uh, and here is the major difference in the two other than the plant health side of stuff. It's the ear flex. 10D21 is a very fixed ear determinant. It's gonna be the same size ear no matter what population we plant it. That's why my irrigation field up there is planted at 42,000 because it's gonna put 42,000 of the same ears on if I would have planted it at 32,000. 10L16 has tremendous ear flex and because we know that it has poor stalks and poor roots, I don't want you to push the pops on this one. I want you to keep them under 34,000 at an absolute maximum and I would prefer that they be under 32,000. 30 to 32 is kind of the sweet spot in my mind for this one. So. Um, I, we're actually, I have more of these down there in a population study. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about down there. So we're not going to go in there. We're not going to pull ears from here right now. Uh, we're going to talk about these two a little bit later. But point being is they both have a fit. This one on your high management, high productive acre where you're willing to push populations and you're willing to, to push it to do top end yield. This one everywhere else where you're still willing to spray a fungicide and stuff, but maybe you're not shooting for 350 bushel corn, you're shooting for 250. Uh, 10L is going to do that all day, but if you're in a 150 to 200 bushel yield environment, this one's still going to be one of your best hybrids. Um, I, I, I really like both of them, if you can't tell that. So um, anyway, we're going to move on. Like I said, we'll talk about these two a little bit more in a minute. All right. 11V76, this one happens to be an AA. We also offer it in a Duracade version. Um, you guys remember last year, the corn that I grew, maybe, um, over there behind our barn, the farm there, I planted some corn the 22nd of April, I believe it was. On like the 24th or 25th of April, we had two inches of snow on top of that corn. That was this hybrid. I called my agronomist and said, hey, I'm gonna, I need to plant something because ground conditions are perfect. What should I plant? And he said beans. And I said, no, you don't understand. Ground conditions are perfect. I'm going to plant corn. Which hybrid do you want me to plant? And he said, okay, fine. 11 V76. Early season, vigor, emergence, stand, uh, uh, stand establishment. This one is very, very, very good. And it took those conditions extremely well. I ended up entering that corn into the NCGA corn growers contest. We had 286, 285 bushel corn in that contest acres, dry land, non-irrigated. Outstanding hybrid. Um, this one is just, it kind of caught me off guard, caught me by surprise. That was the first I'd ever planted it last year and uh, hadn't been hyped up real big by the company. So I wasn't sure what to expect, but just incredible corn. And it's some of my best dry land corn that I have this year is this hybrid as well. Um, just, just plant it. If you plant 111 day corn, plant this one. Different ear type than the one we were just in at that 109 day. Long, skinny ear, they're not super fat. It doesn't look that impressive, to be honest. This one, I mean, it looks average. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but last year it was phenomenal corn and it looks really good this year. One thing I am noticing about it, it seems to be behind from a pollination and maturity standpoint of the 110 and 12 day stuff that I've got it planted around a lot of times. I mean, these kernels are not dented yet. We're at the dough stage, maybe beginning dent. There may be a couple of them starting to, but um, it's it's got a ways to go yet. It almost acts more like 113, 14 day hybrid from a pollination standpoint. Now that said, it may have excellent dry down and just make it from pollination to harvest faster than other hybrids and that's why it's 111 days so um we'll keep an eye on this one we'll see how it does this year i guess before i get too super bent out of shape and how great it is but it's been that way and it, it looks like it's going to be an excellent hybrid all right we're getting into some of the last the last one that i actually know something about here because uh it's the last one that i actually plant and we're getting 113 days it's kind of out of my wheelhouse again and i don't plant a ton of 112 day corn but a little bit so this 12s75 got a little bit of it up in the irrigation field can't handle the high pops that the 10 d21 can but we still got some of it planted 36 37 000, somewhere in that range in the really good zones um very upright leaf structure another one that would be good in narrow rows um just a really healthy plant excellent emergence the same as that 11v does it will come out of the ground early really, really well. Um, if you're gonna plant early into cold, wet soils, I, I don't recommend cold, wet, I recommend cold, dry. Um, but this one is the one to try and get it to handle that. Um, pretty healthy plant type, long skinny ear again, not overly impressive looking ear. However, it is a very overly impressive looking plant type. Uh, my agronomist calls this one the landlord corn because it comes out of the ground so early so well it stays nice and even it's got excellent dark green color it's just a pretty plant type you want to impress somebody with how good your corn looks plant this one 
All right, we're not gonna walk out into these two because, well, I just don't know enough about them to justify doing it. But we've got 13P84, looks like an upright plant type. I could learn a lot walking out there if I wanted to, but I don't sell too much once we get up to this maturity. Um, and then we've got this 13Z. You can see there's a big difference in the plant types between those two. That's the split row right there. Um, this 13Z I do know a little bit about. I had a customer plant this as Enogen corn last year to chop for silage for their dairy. Um, it appraised at like, I don't know, 230 some bushel per acre, was outstanding corn, was over 30 ton silage, just fantastic uh, corn for that point and also for grain, good dual purpose. Uh, Duracade and Viptera in this one, so it's got all the protection that you can need from insects and um, excellent, excellent corn. So, all right, we're moving into my population study. So I gotta go in and pick some ears to be able to show you some of this stuff. But essentially what we did here is uh, we planted 10D21 and 10L16 side by side we did it at 30,000, at 36,000, and at 40 or 42,000 or whatever it is down there. And I want to pick an ear out of each hybrid in each population to show you how the ear sizes changes based on population and hybrid. Before we get into that population stuff there, I wanted to show you this because I promised you I would show you um, the 100 day versus the 113 day. So we can see the maturity differences here. And you can see on this 100 day, we've got dented kernels. This is that ear that we found just a little bit of a milk line on. Uh, this is our 113 day. The kernels are still paler yellow. They don't have as much starch in them yet. Not dented. Uh, there won't be a milk line in this one. Now the ears themselves, not a ton different. This one's a little fatter, maybe a touch longer, but not much. Um, but this one has a lot of grain fill period left and this one is running out of time. So um, we'll see what that makes matters for yield. But generally, kernel weight is a pretty big component. And I mean, they're both really nice ears. So uh, anyway, that's that's the maturity difference. That's 114 days of maturity difference. Well, 14 days of maturity difference. Uh, 199 versus 113. So anyway, there's that. Okay, so I got my ears down here in this board. Now, I'm going to preface this discussion by saying all hybrids flex some, right? You get on the end here where there's lots of sunlight and you get this edge effect, you're going to get these big honking ears. I'm talking about in a field situation. I did not pull any of these ears from the end. I walked out in there and grabbed them from in the middle of a row where there was solid corn. There was no gaps next to them, okay? So we've got, like I said, two different hybrids here, 10D21, 10L16, both 110 days just very different types of plants. So here is the ears that I pulled in my uh, my board. So, oh, I didn't write it down, but over here we have 10L and 10D planted at 42,000. 10L, 10D, 36,000. 10L, 10D, 30,000. Can you see this? Look at this ear compared to this ear compared to this ear not a whole lot of difference. In fact, if we take the 42,000, set it right here next to the 30,000, yeah, there's there's a few extra kernels on that tip, but it ain't much, is it? So, we take the, put this one back, we take the 10L at 30,000 compared to the 10L at 42, and yeah, we got a difference. That's ear flex. That's what it does. I will take 30,000 of these over 30,000 of these every single time like yeah this one's gonna win so in order for 10d to win we got to go down here to the 42 maybe the 36 these are pretty similar ears you can see we got that tip back that we just lost it on the 10l where the 10d it's that's the size of the ear it's filling it all the way out every single time even at 42,000, we filled it all the way out and i will take this 42 over this 42 every time as well um now what this does not show you is the agronomic differences, right? The 10D will stand at 42,000. The 10L probably isn't going to. So where we might have 42,000 of each of these ears out there, if these are laying flat on the ground, we aren't going to be able to harvest them. This one will be standing like a champion and we'll be able to get them all. And that's where the big yield difference will come from that. So um, like, like I said, I'm not saying that these don't flex at all. Clearly there's going to be some differences depending on growing conditions, yield environment, and all of that. I'm not saying you can plant it at 42,000 and have 300 bushel corn. It doesn't work like that. Um, and it may flex in kernel size more so than uh, number of kernels. But clearly, the 10L 
flexes in the size of the ears and the number of kernels and the size of the kernels and that is just a huge difference now you'd have to do some math and we'll take it to yield and see how you know how does this 10l at 30,000 compared to the 10l at 42 well we're going to find that information out um, but i expect at the low population the 10l to win the, the trial and at the high population the 10d2 and that's just the difference in those hybrids so there you have my corn plots this likely got pretty long hopefully i caught everything i'm filming with my gopro instead of my phone today because uh, I thought it would be easier. I don't know that it was, but anyway. Um, if you have any questions on any specific hybrids that we talked about or anything else, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will answer them to the best of my ability. Or uh, if you're not from my area and you're interested in buying Golden Harvest corn, I can help you find uh, where to buy it, who your local dealer would be. If you're close enough to me that I can sell stuff to you, I would be more than happy to talk to you about Golden Harvest corn uh, if it's something that interests you. Again, it's worked really well for us. It's, I mean, I guess this is a sales pitch, but it's just, I feel like my advantage as a seed dealer is that I know these things. I know this hybrids inside and out because I plant them, I walk them, I see them, I harvest them. I know where they work. I know where they don't work. I know their strengths. I know their weaknesses. And uh, I feel like I can help you position them in order to set yourself up for the greatest chance of success. Do we have the greatest hybrids in the industry? Well, yeah, of course we do. I mean, everybody has really good corn there is no seed company out there that's selling junk product well i should okay there is no seed company out there that is selling exclusively crappy products that aren't going to yield every seed company has crappy products that aren't going to yield somewhere in their lineup at least in certain situations there are hybrids out here that i would not consider selling you at least until they prove themselves to me a little bit more but i have other hybrids that I will sell you and that I know will work in certain situations. And so while the variable out there of the weather, we can't control the weather, I, we can control what we're planting, where we're planting it, what soil types we're planting it on and uh, set ourselves up for the best chance of success. So I encourage you to talk to your seed dealers and make sure that they have this kind of information and they can help you um, because that's the information that you should be getting. I, at, at our kickoff meeting, uh, one of the presenters made the comment that, you know, when you go and buy a tractor or a car or something, you get a, you get a big, thick owner's manual, right? It tells you how to operate it, how to drive it. Well, at least they used to. When you buy seed, what do you get? Well, you get a big bill, probably more than a car or a tractor. You might get a book that looks like this. It's got some information in it. But if I or your seed dealer is not setting you up for success and helping you pick this stuff, you need a new seed dealer. So, anyway... That's going to be it for this one. Hit that like and subscribe button. Questions, comments, let me know. I'm going to go film the bean plot one. I'm sure this video is a half an hour long, so we're, we're going to split it into two videos and we'll do a bean one separate. So thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. One more thing. If anybody from Golden Harvest is watching this and you want to throw me some sponsorship money, I would take it from you. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do sell for them. So just throwing that disclaimer out there.